Cinema is filled with thousands of colorful and memorable characters, but sometimes the magic is less in the individuals and more in how they fit together. And today, we're looking at our very favorites. These are our picks for the 10 best movie teams of all time. As we consider the intimidatingly many options for teams, today we're gonna count up, starting small and finishing huge. For our number 10 slot, we're looking at partnerships. And here you find most films like to play in a sense of contrast. You get the classic straight man goofball combo like the Blues Brothers, Abbott and Costello, Vincent and Jules, Neil and Dell, Marcus and Mike, and of course, the odd couple. You find pairings built to be as strange as possible from first glance, like Han and Chewie, R2 and C-3PO, Matilda and Leon, Timon and Pumbaa, Wallace and Gromit, and Marty and Doc. You get a lot of great partnerships that grow from open animosity into respect, like Woody and Buzz, Brennan and Dale, Marshall Cogburn and Maddie, Vincent and Max, and Riggs and Murtaugh. Then again, you also get partnerships like Johnny Utah and Bodie that are pretty much love at first sight. There's also Cheech and Chong, Thelma and Louise, Bill and Ted, Tango and Cash, Harry and Lloyd, and my God, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. But for our first pick, there's no contrast more extreme that manages to come together in as meaningful a way as the one found between Harold and Maud. Tony, do you dance? Pardon me? Do you sing and dance? Uh, no. Uh, no. I thought not. <laughs> One of the first things we had to ask ourselves when considering Harold and Maude was, are they really a team or are they a couple? For the purposes of this list, we defined a team as a group of multiple people generally working together towards a shared objective, more or less. And from this perspective, Harold and Maude aren't so obvious. There's no high stakes contest, no external achievement they're building towards, no villain they're trying to stop. And sure, there's no doubt there's romance at play. It seemed pretty clear to us that they are, in fact, working together and at more than just a successful relationship. As they crash funerals, escape military service, and savor the pleasures of the world, their aim seems to be about something very much greater than just love. Harold and Maude team up to help Harold learn to enjoy life and to help Maude have a meaningful end to hers, each of them bringing to the table something the other needs, showing up with openness and a willingness to craft something greater than their individual selves, which, from our perspective, is the true making of a good team. Glorious birds. Add one more to partnership and your trio is starting to look like a proper crew. And the team dynamics start to expand exponentially in complexity. Maybe you've got a clear leader with two support members, like Conan and the Barbarian's gang, the crew of Apollo 13, the Plastics, and both the Princess Bride's trios, first with Vizzini, then with Wesley. Or maybe you go with the classic two normies and a wild card, as in Superbad, Easy Rider, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and Jaws or the menage a trois of Itu Mama Tambien and Band Apart. The good, the bad, and the ugly are a sort of team held sort of together by the threat of mutual violence. Stalker's trio is a heady mix of daring dreamers, and the Big Lebowski carves out three highly specific oddball niches that somehow mesh unbelievably well. We don't want to forget the trios of La Haine, Tulane Blacktop, the treasure of Sierra Madre. However, for us, this one was never even close. The top trio here is none other than Larry, Moe, and Curly, the Three Stooges. One of these days, I'll tear your tonsils off. There's no way you can do it. I'm sorry, Moe. It was a loose board. A loose board? I don't see any loose boards. Here! Oh! Oh, forgive me. Here. Hit me with that and we'll be all be even. No, I couldn't hit you with that. But I can with this. Formed out of a vaudeville act in the 1920s, the most iconic iteration of the Three Stooges appeared in over 90 films, primarily shorts, during their 12-year golden era. Even as they seem to be employed in every conceivable occupation and engagement, as far as teams are concerned, we wouldn't recommend hiring the Stooges if you're looking for a job well done, or efficiently, or with clear communication. 
or any kind of compassion whatsoever. In fact, the Stooges are pretty much the epitome of abusive group dynamics, but it somehow is a big feature of their charm. With Mo, the detestable heel, Larry, the weirdo middle child, and Curly, the lovable moron. These three practically put the slap in slapstick and have been entertaining people for almost 100 years at this point. The masters of failing forwards and bumbling upwards, they worked tirelessly to craft a distinctly lowbrow brand of humor to very little critical success, but to the greatest peaks of mass comedy popularity in their time. Add one more, and we're looking at four, and that f***ing rhymes. The teams have enough members now to split up into pairs or form factions within themselves. You get a wider swath of personalities, and the dynamics rely less on having one odd man or woman out. But they do have de facto leaders often enough. Consider the IMF, or the Channel 4 News Team, Elliot Ness's crew, the burglars from Rafifi, the Earp Brothers and Doc Holliday, the Lavender Hill Mob, and Alex and his Droogs. But we don't want to forget more democratic organizations like the Boys of Stand By Me, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the March Sisters, the Professionals, the Three Musketeers after adding D'Artagnan, and Dorothy, Scarecrow, Tin Man, and the Cowardly Lion. Although, if you count Toto, this team really should be in our next slot. However, for this one, our top choice with a bullet is, of course, the Ghostbusters. Ray has gone bye-bye, Egon. What have you got left? Sorry, Beckman. I'm terrified beyond the capacity for rational thought. Oh no. Mother pus bucket. Harold Ramis, Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, and Ernie Hudson form one of the most utterly quotable, lovable, and iconic crews ever to grace the silver screen. The winning formula combines Ray Stance's true believer enthusiasm with Egon Spangler's awkward nerdiness and the perfect deadpan sarcasm of Peter Venkman with Winston Zedmore's often undervalued sense of skeptical shock and incredulity standing in for the audience member's perspective. All the characters are individually hilarious, but when you cross their streams and form them into a group designed to save the world from rogue paranormal entities, there is an explosion of dynamic personality that the world of cinema goers has not once forgotten since the Ghostbusters first appeared. What are you supposed to be, some kind of a cosmonaut? <laughs> no, we're exterminators. Somebody saw a cockroach up on 12. Five is an amazing number for a team. Big enough to support lots of interesting internal dynamics and conflicts and relationships, while still small enough to give time to each singular character and develop them in an interesting way. Consider The Breakfast Club. Every member has their place. No one steps on the other's toes, except where they're meant to. And there are 10 internal relationships between each individual pair, all of which get a little screen time. The same goes for The Watchmen, The Incredibles Family, the cast of Tropic Thunder, the agents of Team America World Police, the criminals of the Lady Killers, the Guardians of the Galaxy, the Dinosaur Squad of the Land Before Time, and the Furniture Fam of the Brave Little Toaster. Heat's crew has a strong core, but is super disqualified on account of personnel disputes. Monty Python and the Holy Grail's Roundtable mostly go do their own thing, but we still love them. And Cowboy Bebop's five bounty hunters, counting the dog this time, are the best in the damn solar system. But we're reserving this slot to shine a light on a much lesser known group, although one no less deserving. The five sisters from the brilliant little film, Mustang. En büyükleri sensin. Senden başlayacağım. Mustang follows five young Turkish orphans, looked after by their grandmother and uncle who are locked up in a house for fear of their burgeoning femininity as their caretakers attempt to marry them off as quickly as possible. They resist in every possible way they can, fighting and often thwarting the adults' efforts to imprison them and hating the idea of being separated. The young actors do an absolutely astonishing job with their characters, inhabiting them with such credibility and life that every moment of their interaction feels like one genuinely stolen from an actual family's life. But it's in their shared objective to escape captivity and stay together, and the way the film constantly highlights how they support each other in it that they absolutely shine as a team in addition to a family. For number six, we're looking at teams of six. That's how this is progressing. Things start to get crowded from here on out, only the very best movie can juggle this many characters and make them all feel important and unique. But the ones that do, boy can they be special. 
like the cast of Galaxy Quest, important all the way down to their extra, or the team Dom assembles in Inception, or the Deadly Vipers Assassination Squad, or the Brown family from the Paddington films, or the original Rogue One Squad, or the Mr. Colors from Reservoir Dogs, or the Monster Squad, counting Phoebe as is only right. However, we got to set at least one slot aside for super team-ups, and that is what we're doing here. Does that mean we're giving this to the Justice League? Surely you know us better than that by now. No, this one belongs to the multi-dimensional spider gang from Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Hey there. Do animals talk in this dimension? Cause I don't want to freak them out. A team of different incarnations of the same one superhero is already a slam dunk of an idea that we would never be able to ignore on this list. But when you add in the great care that the writers and animators behind Into the Spider-Verse took to include the teaminess in the shape of their storytelling, using it as a device for Miles' growth, tracking it in its own art, and building it even into the fight choreography, we simply couldn't not pick this film. It's such a brilliant device, and the similar yet differentness of the six Spider members of the squad allow for what is essentially six great variations on one big theme. It's a distinctly spidery canvas on which to paint a picture of differing forms of heroism, allowing small contrasts to stand out in a meaningful way. I'm taking this cube thing with me. I don't understand it, but I will. We continue to grow to seven for our next slot. Our options keep getting narrower, and this will be our last category before we start looking at ranges of group sizes. Some of the best teams of this number include the passengers of the stagecoach, the average Joes, Mal's spunky shipmates in Serenity, the boisterous boys of the Delta House, Kevin and the six dwarves from Time Bandits, Predator's paramilitary rescue squad, and the ragtag group of cowboys from the Magnificent Seven, the original. There is one pick here that is so obvious that we've talked about it so many times that I literally forbade our writer Billy from picking it. So instead, we're very begrudgingly going with the next best option, the Goonies. Look at them smiling. They can't wait until tomorrow when they foreclose on all the whatever you call it. Trash the Goondocks. When they wreck our house, I hope they make it a sand trap. The Goonies really are a great team. The film is a silver age of Hollywood staple about the excitement of adventure and the power of friendship. In pursuit of hidden treasure and local legend, the seven young adventurers navigate friendship, siblinghood, and first love. Their group dynamic is perfectly calibrated to evoke massive pangs of nostalgia for what childhood friendship felt like for most of us. And of course, you all know by now exactly what it is they never say. Maybe there'll be a sound up right here in case you forgot. Never say that! Goonies never say die! For our number four slot, we're looking at teams numbering between eight and nine members. We're properly big at this point, and most movies will have to relegate at least some members to the second tier. Or they might not all be alive anymore, as in The Watchmen's Minutemen. Or they might keep dying off, as in The Wild Bunch. Blade 2 gives us a vampire supergroup in the Blood Pack, the Sandlot fields an entire neighborhood of rascals, and the Guns of the Navarone join up with some local resistance to make nine saboteurs. There is another pick here that is so obvious that we've talked about so many times that I literally forbade our writer Billy from picking it. So with much complaining and gnashing of teeth, he has looked elsewhere, perhaps to the wild gang on the run of the Warriors? Almost. They just missed this slot here in favor of an even seedier pick, Jack Horner's porn production team from Boogie Nights. We almost solved the case. At least the women are safe. Let's go get some of that Saturday night beer. This is the best work we've ever done. Sure, Jack Horner's crew didn't outsmart or outmaneuver the ring wraiths on numerous occasions. But this gaggle of misfits manages to create a meaningful family in the strangest of places. And sure, Dirk Diggler and co. may not have brought together representatives of all the realms of elves, dwarves, and men, but P.T. Anderson did put together a godly good cast of Hollywood's finest character actors and then lit up the screen with them. And all at the age of freaking 26. The more we think about it, this may have just been the right pick after all. Closing in at number three, we're looking at stupid big teams of 10 to 20. This could be a group of deep core drillers hurriedly put through space camp like the ones in Armageddon, or a subcrew like the one from The Life of Aquatic with Steve Zissou, or a roving band of circus bugs like the one from A Bug's Life. It's the collection of bridge officers from any of the Star Treks, or all the Lost Boys from Hook, 
the Inglorious Bastards, Dom Squad in the later Fast and Furious films, and the entire crew of the Black Pearl. The Avengers are kind of all over the place, but by the Infinity War saga, they're well into the double digits, and it's really hard to tell how many people are in on the caper in the sting, so we're just gonna be safe and assume the answer is a lot and mention them here. And then you get the number titled films that make our job counting a little easier. Ocean's Eleven, One More Gets You the Dirty Dozen, and One More Still gets to our pick, the utterly bonkers 13 Assassins. なにやつだ。直家で馬切って捨てるぞ。昨年 on a list without Seven Samurai, 13 Assassins is a welcome replacement. A clear, explicit, and unmistakable homage to the Kuosawa original, Takashi Miike's ultra-violent period epic plays much the same way. An older, wizened samurai is tasked with assembling a team of varied warriors, this time for the purpose of assassination. He recruits 11 of his order and can't help but collect one more wildcard team member who proves, despite appearances, to be as fierce as any samurai. The film culminates in a massive, grimy, muddy, violent set piece where an unbelievable amount of killing happens. The film deeply rewards familiarity with Kuosawa's original, allowing Miike's deviations from the formula to make even more of an impact. These samurai are badass enough to take on an entire army, and you definitely don't want to miss it. Runner up at number two, we have to take a slot to examine the obvious, entire sports teams. Whether they're playing football like Marshall, the Titans, Permian High, or the Sentinels, basketball like the Hickory High Huskers, the Toon Squad, or the Milwaukee Beers, kinda, hockey like the Charleston Chiefs, or Team USA, or soccer like the Hounslow Harriers, or Team Shaolin. However, cinema has always had a special relationship with baseball. From the Bad News Bears, to the New York Knights, to the Ghost Team from Field of Dreams, to our number two pick, the Rockford Peaches from A League of Their Own. The standard sports movie teamwork arc tends to see a group of egotistical players whipped into eventual cooperation and success by a manager who impresses upon them the importance of the group over the individual. By the final game of the season, they put his lessons into practice, overcome their differences, and succeed for it. But A League of Their Own is a movie of its own, operating almost in reverse as a far more pro-social team of players withstand the manager, league, and culture that would seek to pull them apart. Watching Tom Hanks play a rare bastard is always a treat, and nothing is more fun than getting to see Rosie O'Donnell cheer for her own manager's ejection. And even as the leads develop a rift, their camaraderie eventually transcends a trade to a rival team, which we think proves once and for all the Peaches really are a cut above. Finally, finishing us off at number one, what point is there in doing it if you aren't also going to overdo it? This slot is for entire goddamn armies. This is the whole crew of the Enterprise, which by some counts goes up to 5,000, and the sum total of the X-Men, who, after an ungodly number of movies, must be about the same by now. It's the Submariners of Das Boot, the Merry Men of the Adventures of Robin Hood, the Recruits of Mulan, the Prisoners of War on the Bridge of the River Kwai, 101st Airborne and Saving Private Ryan, and I can't remember quite how many Greeks there were in the movie 300, but I know it was a lot. Glory's 54th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment just just misses this pick but for its commanding officer. Instead, for our number one slot, we're giving it to the POWs who work together in an attempt to bust out of Stalag Luft 3 in The Great Escape. We're ready. Big enough? It's perfect. Right through the middle of the foundation. Why 17? This is the 17th tunnel that he started. Not quite an official army on account of their varied countries of origin, but the 250 imprisoned soldiers working together to escape their German captors represent a massive coordinated effort on a personnel scale mostly unrivaled in all of cinema. 
Of course, we don't get to know every single soldier working towards escape, but the main cast of leaders and officers create an impressive ensemble all their own, even as they stand in for the others they command. And the getaway itself is a caper worthy of the impressive runtime. As ambitious in its scope as the film is meticulous in its presentation of their plan, requiring immense coordination and cooperation and improvisation, it's an absolute blast watching all the different parts of this giant human-powered machine come together into something truly improbable. Which is why we think this veritable army of troublemakers is one of the best cinematic teams of all time. So, what do you think? Disagree with any of our picks? Did we leave out any of your favorite teams? Were they the Seven Samurai? Please send your hate mail to 5630... Wait, no, that's, that's my address. I'm not reading this. I'm not going to read that out loud. And also, be sure to subscribe to IGN Movies and TV for more Cinefix movie lists.